Mill Surf Garage. <laughs> The Taurus PT 1911AR. Told you I was going to give you a Brazilian one two punch. This is the, uh, it was a left right combination. This is the right. It is a uh, 45 caliber semi automatic 1911 clone. Uh, means it's short recoil operated, eight round mags. We have the uh, Picatinny rail here, which is where the R comes from for AR. And uh, we have a plethora of features. I'm going to go over a couple of them. Uh, yeah, so we have the Rossi, the Overland shotgun. And now uh, here we're coming back with the uh, Taurus. Uh, Taurus uh, bought Rossi. They bought a whole bunch of things. I was... I was really surprised. I'm going to show you later. I didn't even know that they bought Beretta had like a factory in Brazil. They bought up that too. You know, they're not, they're not fooling around over there, Taurus. They were uh, a pretty big company over there. So with this pistol specifically, um, was introduced 
at the 2005 SHOT Show. There was a lot of talk about it. Taurus then was uh, really regarded. They they kind of have like sort of a, um, a better reputation now, but in 2005, their reputation was really bad. And um, at the 2005 SHOT Show, they introduced this, and people raised an eyebrow. They were like, well, you know, a lot of times people just get it in their head. A company is junk, and that's it. And they don't give it an opportunity. You know, like, even car companies have gone through their periods where they made, like, you know, junk. You know what I mean? Like, you see, I got a 72 Roadrunner 440 in my older videos. I still have that car. I mean, that was a pinnacle for Chrysler during 68 to 72. They were they were right in the zone, you know what I mean? But in the 80s with the K cars and the... You can't hold that against them. It's like they, they rebounded. They came back, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, and nowadays they're... They're uh, one of the few companies that's really, you know, pounding the pavement with some serious performance products. I mean, Plymouth is gone. It's not the same Chrysler that it once was. But companies, they, they go through all different kinds of... Uh, um, they, they morph into different things um, along, along the years, throughout their history. And uh, this, this guy was released in 2005. This is a 2013... They had made some changes. They had made improvements, you know, along the lines with these things, too. Um, for, uh, you know, things like the sites and things like that. And uh, and they had a couple of issues where there was something with the, uh, something with the safety that was, uh, that was um, fouling up. And they were taking the pistols back and repairing them for free. Some people that were giving issues, talking about how they it took a long time for them to get it back. I had seen some things, but I mean, at least you know there's a company that's making good, and they they supposedly fixed by 2013. They had fixed what was potentially wrong there, or something that was uh, that was a little cruddy. So then once again, there was the bad reputation for this thing because of one little stumbling block. You know what I mean? But somebody had told me um, the thing about Taurus is, and I don't really. I didn't really, this isn't coming from my mouth, this is coming from somebody else that's pretty knowledgeable told me, they said, the thing about a company like Taurus is as long as they're not making the, the design on their own and they're copying another design, they'll be fine. They're good at like mimicking, but if you buy a gun that's theirs specifically, that they're not really so great. Like hence the Beretta thing. So let me get into this right away. I might as well just show you this like right off the bat. This, by the way, is my small arms visual encyclopedia by Martin J. Doherty, which uh, this was a gift from my brother-in-law and my uh, sister and um, their family for the holidays. And I can't believe they, number one, without like raiding my gun library, they found a book that I didn't have. How did they know I didn't have this specific book? And then it's, it's a weird book because it's like a, it's really just there's really isn't much information. There's just like a lot of cool pictures and it covers a lot of weird stuff that you wouldn't think. I mean, you wouldn't think there's like, you know, flamethrowers in here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't see a book that had the different kinds of flamethrowers and everything. Very detailed photos. and But I mean, there are errors. And uh, see, like it says that this is a nine round magazine. It says that here. It says... Uh, it says right here, nine round detachable box magazine for the for the uh, Taurus uh, PT nineteen eleven, and it's a uh, it's an eight it's a nine round capacity, but it's an eight plus one. So there are mistakes in it and everything, but it is a cool book just to pick up and look through cool pictures of stuff that you might normally not have seen rocket launchers and t anti tank weapons, all kinds of stuff. So. Here it is. Uh, here's the stats on it. I'll throw some stats at you later. But here's some of the other stuff that they have, like in this book that they feature. And here's the PT-100, which you see has that open top slide. I don't know much about, the, you know, these things. I don't know about the Taurus PT-100. Just reading in this book, it says, When Taurus bought Beretta's Brazilian factory, they began producing a developed version of the Beretta 92. The Taurus 100 is the same gun rechambered for 10.16 millimeter. I think that's 40 cal, uh, 40 Smith and Wesson. And uh, so it's like they bought 
Beretta's Brazilian factory. And then I had read, like, doing the research for Rossi that they had bought Rossi. So it's a lot of, uh, a lot of buying uh, different companies uh, going on here. They're acquiring a lot of stuff. Okay, so why do I think I think this I think this gun is awesome. We'll just start off right there. I really do for for uh and I'm not even gonna say things like you would normally hear people talk about these, they go, for the money, they're great. You know what I mean? Because who cares if it's like if you paid fifteen dollars for these but they fell apart or potentially blew up in your hand or weren't there for you during a situation where you were relying on the gun, right? then uh, who cares how cheap it is, you know what I mean? So I'm not even going to give you that story, like, for the money, they're great. But I'll tell you this, you get a lot for your money, you know what I mean? So, okay, sorry, the phone bugged out. So you get a lot for your money is a better uh, way to put it. Because um, these things, they they don't really cost all that much, and they certainly give you a lot. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, they might not be as high a quality as, say, a multi-thousand dollar gun, but um, they, sh they sure do appear that uh, they should cost more than they really do. So let's get into what, uh, what these things actually have. So the description of this thing, like from ads or reviews they basically say i'm going to read this to you off of something it says they differ from its many competitors in the 1911 style market in that the basic model offers a package of features found on top end models for more expensive semi-custom pistol manufacturers such as springfield army para ordnance kimber manufacturing at a significantly lower cost uh, they feature a forged steel frame and slide they were originally marketed with a blued carbon steel finish, but as of 2007, a stainless version is released. And then, I'm not exactly sure what finish this is, but this is even stepping up from the, the stainless. They have this uh, this look. Um, and, uh, well, we'll get into some of the... Let's get into... Let me read you some of the specifications for those people that are... Uh, you don't have a lot of the stuff for the mill serp stuff, but this newer stuff, the information is right there. They're made in Porto Alegre, Brazil, um, but sold here in America. There's a Taurus, a Taurus uh, USA, uh, you know, part of their company, you know what I mean? Which is where, uh, you know, where that neat little item came from. And uh, they are about 38 ounces. There's different versions of it. So this one is not the aluminum. They have one that's an aluminum chassis. Not the slide, but the chassis. That one might be a little lighter. I think this one's around 38 to 40 ounces. Eight and a half inches long, five inch barrel. One and a half inches wide, 5.45 inches tall. Uh, they make them in nine millimeter as well as 45. And uh, they do make different magazines for them that are larger. But I would only assume they stick out from the, uh, the hand grip. Uh, trigger pull is three to five pounds. Uh, the rifling is five and one sixteenth twist, six groove barrel. It has the trigger actuated, they call it California spec firing pin drop safety. And the features are a custom fitted slide with serrations front and rear, polished feed ramp and barrel throat. I showed you that on the disassembly, how polished that feed ramp is. The ventilated trigger, a uh, lowered and flared ejection port. There's a flare right here. Um, there's a, an extended ambi safety. There is 30 LPI checkering on the flat mainspring housing, the trigger guard and the front strap underneath here. They, under, people always wonder why do they put it here on custom guns. It's because your second, your second hand uh, runs right up against that. Would be the reason that they do that. 
Uh, beaver tail grip safety with memory pad. And I'm not really sure what memory pad is. Uh, if it's something that's so 911 specific that I sound stupid saying that. Sorry, but I don't know what the hell it is. Um, cus custom fitted close tolerance barrel and bushing, and it sure feels that way. Full length recoil spring guide rod, target hammer, beveled magazine well, oversized slide and magazine releases. Uh, Novak three dot sights. They're not um, night sights, but as of two thousand eight, they were Novak sights. Before that, they were straight eights. Um, and it has a a gun lock. There is a lot on the on the back of the hammer right here. Um, it comes with a key where when you turn it, it, a little nipple sticks out of the hammer here and won't allow the hammer to come down far enough to be able to strike the firing pin here. So you wouldn't be able to fire. And I think that somehow coupled with the safety is what was screwing up to, uh, so that's, I never really messed with it, but, um, it's not an obtrusive one of those. So people say that they don't like to see that key hole thing on the hammer, but it doesn't really bother me. It's kind of nice that it's there if you should ever need it. Um, it's kind of cool that it is available, but I never even turned it. And, uh, so that's that as far as the uh the features but i can tell you this uh here we are again with our realistic snap caps these are inert rounds uh realistic snap caps is uh continuing some good news i was just in contact with them and they're going to continue to uh be uh you know our our affiliation let's put it that way where um, i am not getting paid from these guys a dime but uh, they're sending me their products to check out because uh, I had bought a ton of these things and contacted them. I, I love these things. Look at these. These are these are ones I bought. Okay, if ten of these forty-five caliber ones. Ten of them. So most of these forty-fives they're like eight rounds, seven rounds, eight rounds, right? Whatever. Even eight plus one if you wanted to do tactical training. And uh, you could buy ten of them, so you're sure that have enough. And uh, that's nineteen ninety-nine. Now, if you get through me, uh, through if you just mention our channel by putting the coupon code Milsurp Garage in, you get ten percent off. So what's that? What's ten percent of twenty percent? That's two dollars. So that knocks it down to eighteen, and he doesn't charge shipping. So that's that's eighteen bucks for ten of these things. And look at them. I have been beating the crap out of these for months. Look at them. You have to make sure they're scratched up. They're beat up. They're dog. I've cycled. I've cycled them through through my gun millions of times i would have thought for sure that by now plastic snap caps by now would be dust are you kidding me and look at these things none of these rounds are even loose they're nothing absolutely no none for wear <laughs> just just scratches not one of these silicone um firing pin protector things has fallen out of there come loose degraded nothing well anyway hate to sound like a broken record but man these things are awesome and uh you know i feel for this guy he got like uh like amazon's getting like kind of like the way youtube is where they're they're not really very friendly for uh firearm related content let's say and uh they were giving him some trouble and he had to take all his stuff down off of amazon and uh, because they changed their policies where they were considering that like, you know, like ammunition, even though they're not, they're a training aid and, uh, or a, uh, function testing aid. They made him take his stuff down and then, uh, the stuff they had on, on hand, they took their time to even send back to him. You know what I mean? So this guy wanted to sell stuff through his website and they were holding on to most of his stock. It's terrible. So I felt bad for him. So, uh. I um, I feel that bond because I kind of feel like YouTube is uh, being wacky with me. And I just want to have a nice gun channel here. So look at the smoothness of this thing. Look at this. Oh, that's like butter. I wish you could feel that. And this thing, yeah, I mean, it's it's broken in. I've, um, I've used it uh, quite a bit. Let's do a mag change here. Boom. Bang. Boom. Nice. 
Look at it. It's uh, it's an awesome gun. Now check this. Wait, I'll show you something else cool. Look at this. This is uh, yeah, these are the Taurus mags that it comes with. It comes with two of these, right? That look like this. But here's just a regular mil spec uh, 1911 magazine. Uh, do they work in here? Of course they work in here. This is a this is a 1911 spec uh, gun. They certainly work. They certainly do. Yep. So, what is it about this thing that um, is appealing? Well, I'll tell you. It's not so much just these features, because like I said, you could have all these features in the world and and charge a low price, and it could mean nothing if the thing isn't quality. You know what I mean? If it's not uh, functioning cool, check out the rail. Got our little, uh, oops, got our little O-light right here. Pink. There you go. Now we got... Uh, we got red dot. We got light. We got light. We got red dot. Nice. So that's what uh, that's what it looks like with the rail being utilized with a uh, with an O light. Okay, where was I? What was I saying? Oh, what makes it appealing? What makes it appealing is that it says it functions the way it's supposed to. What else can I say? Did I ever have a stovepipe with it? Yeah, I think a couple of times a brass might not have ejected properly in maybe its first few hundred rounds. Um, it... Uh, it functions flawlessly once it breaks in. But even if, even if it had a little failure to feed once in a blue moon, would not take anything away from this gun, honestly. Because it's, uh, because it offers so much. It really does. They really offer so much. Now, for somebody that really takes pride in having like a real tricked out Kimber or something like that. And they want people at the range to be like, oh, look at that. So can I, can I check that out? <laughs> then maybe this isn't for you. But if somebody just really wants to feel good that that the money that they spent uh, went towards um, a company that really puts forth the effort to come out with a good product, then this is going to be for you because... Uh, that's kind of like how I how I feel about it. How was I introduced to this gun? My father-in-law had one. He uh, lives in Florida. And when uh, I used to go down there to visit him, well, it's not that he's gone or anything. He's still down there. I just don't really visit that much anymore in Florida. But um, when I used to go down there all the time, I used to always go to the range with that, with one. He had a 1911 in stainless. And that's when I fell in love with the thing. And... One time when I went down there, he's like, I don't have that anymore. I traded it for something else. He was a big trader. He'd always, you know, guys in Florida are always going to these gun shows and trading everything for something else. And he, uh, he got rid of it. And I always, I missed it. I always missed it and wanted to, uh, get back, uh, get one for myself. You know what I mean? And, uh, so I did. And when I went looking, I saw that they had one, uh, Nice and uh, tricked out like this in this uh, satin black color, which is uh, very appealing to me. This finish, you know. So, uh, one more. There we go. So, the Taurus PT 1911. What else did I have here? Why do I feel like I'm uh, forgetting something? Uh... I guess that's it. Well, I told you I'd be back with another Brazilian gun. Um, nice mellow mood on a Saturday night here. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to take a look around. Maybe I'll pull out something Millserp too, and I'm going to do it. I think I'll do a double feature tonight. I think while this is uploading, I'm going to poke around. Don't go nowhere. It's, it's 8 o'clock at night now, so I'll have this up. This will all be posted up by 9 and I think uh, for you late night uh, people, I might uh, slide in the door with something else. 
Uh, I'll try. All right. Listen, I love this thing. It uh, here's its uh, here's its great grandfather. <laughs> you know, um, John Browning would be proud of a gun like this. He would. He really would because it stays true to uh, to to his design. And uh, you know when you when you look back here on these older guys, this is like World War II vintage. You see, you don't see the uh, the safety right there. That button. See this this button that you see right there. See that button right there, that round button. What that does is is uh, when you uh, oops, I forgot I had it loaded. See there you go. There's a little cycling it weird kind of uh, motion there, kind of. Uh, Having my finger in front of the ejection port screwed it up. But look, I, I know already I can fix that in two seconds. Press check. It's good. Um, where was I going? That button. You know what that is? They, they said that it was the California. What did they call it on here? Let me roll up a little bit and see what they called it again. They called it a California spec firing pin drop safety. What that is is John Browning designed the firing pin slightly shorter than where it would get hit from the hammer and where it would strike the primer. If you measured that, where the edge here, where the hammer hits it and the edge where it exits the hole and hits the primer, the firing pin is shorter than that and it's spring loaded. So you'd be like, if it's shorter than that, how the hell if I push it with my finger, it won't protrude out the hole here. So how is that? It's an inertia firing pin. So when it gets hit, the inertia it's spring loaded. The inertia carries it into the primer and then back again. So it's so it has to get hit. It has to get hit by the hammer in order to in order to in order to be able to come forward enough to hit the hit the firing pin. So that even if even if you dropped it, even if you had the hammer down like this it's it, it's not enough it's right now it's not sitting the, the the firing pin isn't sitting on the primer it's and there's when you drop it they wouldn't it wouldn't get hit and be able to impart inertia into the firing pin it would have to get hit by a swinging hammer and if this ever let go like this let me show you if this ever how am i going to do this if this ever let go watch this if you're not pulling the trigger, see how it, it stopped right there. There's like a safety right there, you see? So it couldn't fall like this when you were cocking it. It couldn't fall and hit either. And if you dropped it, if you dropped it on on the hammer, the hammer is right now all the way down, sitting on the firing pin. But like I said, it's not it's too short to reach. It needs the inertia to hit. So then what is that button? So that, that's the safety John Browning put into this guy. Right, so then you say like, well, what is that button? What that button is, it's an extra safety called a drop safety because they would think that there might be enough inertia if it's in this position right now with a round in the chamber that if you dropped it, or even if the hammer was, was back, it wouldn't make a difference at that point. If you dropped it and it hit like this, that and the sudden stop might be enough inertia to make that firing pin strike the round and for it to go off. Maybe not if you dropped it, but like let's say you threw it into the ground and it happened to hit like that. So what that button is is it's a button that sticks up into the firing pin, actually. And when you pull the trigger, a piece of metal comes up out of the receiver here and presses that button to move that button out of the way to allow the firing pin to come forward. So that even if you drop it, the firing pin is held in position by that button unless the trigger is being pulled, which makes it from the, from the safest gun in the world to the most incredibly safe gun in the world. That's basically what it does. I know that this is half of this video is just on the safety button, but... That isn't an easy thing to explain, but um, hopefully that did the job. Taurus PT, 
1911 AR. That's a wrap. See you later. Thank you.